Hello and welcome back to our workshop where today we're taking a close look at Heldon's new 00 gauge Ruston 165DE 060 shunter. There's been a really good trend lately for small shunting locomotives and one of the latest ones is the new Helgen Ruston 060 and uh, Mark's been taking a closer look at it. Can you tell us a little bit more about this locomotive? Yeah, so these were first introduced in the early 1950s, built by Ruston and Hornsby at their Lincoln Works. Um, and they were mainly for industrial use, although some did also go into BR operation, but they were used as what they call permanent way machines. Yeah, because they were actually named PWMs at one point. PWMs. Um, and it was, I think, Western Region um, uh, took them on board. And they were used for um, operations at various um, rail assembly type depots, or yards, if you like. Um, but in later years also turned up at, um, I can remember seeing them at Reading Signal Works, certainly one of them. And are any of these left in preservation today? Yeah, there's still a couple in operation, in, um, or still in existence, if you like, um, on Preserve Railways. So moving on to the model, what options are actually available on it? So there's two main types available. There's the industrial um, engines. There's two versions of that um, available through Helljan stockists. There's a green version, National Coal Board green version, and there's also an industrial yellow version as well. And then for the permanent way machines, there are a number of versions running from BR Green through to um, BR Departmental Yellow, which are available through Kernow Model Rail Centre, and those are available in pristine and also in weathered condition. So what can we expect from the specification of this Helgen model? Well, it really is a delightful little model. It's got a cordless motor, it's got a flywheel, um, it's got Next18 DCC decoder sockets. The cab interior is illuminated and that's operated through a magnetic wand device. So you just wave the wand over the cab and the lights come on um, and then go off again once you wave the wand over the second time. Um, it's got some nice little detail bits with um, lamp irons, um, separately fitted handrails as well, glazing. Uh, we've got two versions that we've tried out. We've got the standard um, industrial green version, the National Coal Board number 45. Um, we've also got the PWM um, in BR yellow as well. And yeah. again, that's, that's looking rather nice. Yeah, I quite like the fact that the accessory pack's got little blanking plates to go where the NEM coupling socket is instead, so you can blank off the whole of the buffer beam. Yeah. And you've also got optional brake pipes in there, you've got the dummy screw and couplings, and also actually even the lamp irons. There's two different types of lamp irons with the uh, industrial ones. You've got black ones or white ones as well, take your pick and slot them and in. And you've got the little lubricator device as well. That's right, yeah, actually, the lubricator device is actually quite neat, actually. It's, it's and actually, surprisingly, not as difficult as you think it might be to remove if you want to take the whole body off either. Um, there's various ways that they, they, there's two ways you can take the body off, but one is less destructive, if you like, <laughs> than perhaps the other might be. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. it's easy to damage some of those little details. So yeah. if you have one of these, do check the information that's within the, um, within the box. I've got to say, actually, I found my original way was easier with them, actually, than the, than the new way that's been marked within the instructions. Because you have to, uh, the, the latest way you have to take off two um, plastic components off the front of the chassis, then reach two very small cross-head screws and right up at the top of the chassis. Um, whereas by doing it the old way, where you take out the two end screws, um, and then very carefully prising that um, lubricating arm out of the uh, out of its socket. Um, actually, it was quite an easy thing to do to take the body off much quicker as well. Absolutely. Uh, it's also got um, space for a 15 by 8 millimeter um, cube speaker as well with the nice little enclosure at the front. And uh, how did it run? I mean, it's, it's always quite tricky with a, an 060 small wheelbase chassis like this to get it to run well. As with any locomotive with a small wheelbase like this, you need to have impeccably cre clean track. Um, if you've got sort of any potential for it to stutter, there's every chance that it will. But it, our examples have run nicely. Um, we had 20 wagons running behind the, uh, the green locomotive um, on test as well. Um, and it ran, ran nicely and quietly. If, if this was one of my own locos, particularly the shunting loco and the type of duty I wanted to do, I'd be finding a space for a stay alive in there as well. So. Yeah, I was going to say that if, you, if you've got the opportunity to, it's the sort of thing that you would want to consider for this model. Yeah. So Mark, to the important questions, how much is it going to cost me and where can I buy one from? 
So the standard industrial versions are available through Helljam stockists, while the PWM, the permanent weigh machine versions, um, all colours and descriptions in pristine and in weathered finishes are available through Kernow Model Rail Centre. Um, the PWM versions are priced at 17499, whilst the industrial versions are priced at £199. Super. Well, I think these are cracking little models. Got some nice details on them as well, and you can read our full review in the latest issue of Hornby Magazine. That's issue 192, our June 2023 issue, which is on sale during May, and uh, also online at keymodworld.com. And uh, finally, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us today and watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time. Bye now. Bye.